Hello, spooky pals. Are you ready to read some scary books? Hello, spooky friends. Today, I will be sharing with you my spooky TBR for the season. And honestly, like, let's be real. I could not be more excited. I have a cozy cup of coffee here, my third of the day. <laughs> So if you're wondering what the vibes are, that's all you really need to know. So anyways, I've got my cozy cup of coffee in my spooky mug. It says witch's brew on it. And you guys, I just, listen, I really feel like this is the time of the year where I just feel the most myself. I'm wearing dark colors. My nails literally are decked out in ghosts. I've redone my Kindle so it looks super spooky and cute. I get to drink out of a cauldron. And now we're gonna talk about some scary books. Life could not be better. Before I go ahead and dive into my very lengthy spooky TBR though, I would love to thank today's sponsor, which is Book of the Month. Good evening. Do you want to know what haunts me late at night? It's not monsters, goblins, vampires, or even ghosts. I will say though, spiders are scary whether you're dead or alive, so. It is what it is, you know? But nay, it's much worse than all of that. It's not knowing what to read next. <laughs> but wait, don't die of fright yet. There is one hero that can save the day, and that is Book of the Month. Book of the Month is a fast growing book subscription service. Every month, their team vets hundreds of new releases to curate the ultimate selection for voracious readers. Just sign into your account and select the book or books you'd like to be sent to your door. And readers can also choose from their backlist titles, so the options are a plenty. This month, I chose two spooky titles. The first book I chose was Starling House by Alex E. Haro, a grim and gothic new tale about a small town haunted by secrets that can't stay back buried and the sinister house that sits at the crossroads of it all. The second book I chose was The Unmaking of June Faro by Adrian Young. A woman risks everything to end her family's century-old curse, solve her mother's disappearance, and find love in this mesmerizing novel from the New York Times best-selling author of Spells for Forgetting. And this month, Book of the Month has an incredibly spooky good deal. You can get your very first book for only $5. $5, seriously, that is absolutely incredible and enough to bring anyone back from the dead. And if you would like to get your very first book with Book of the Month for only $5, use the code SPOOKY. All links for Book of the Month will be down below in my description box and I could not recommend them more. Happy reading and happy haunting. So let's go ahead and kick things off with some spooky middle grades. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I love spooky middle grades. I feel like I could read an entire TBR just based on spooky middle grades. It's my very favorite thing in the entire world. Everything about the genre of spooky middle grade makes my soul happy. On this list, I only have two to share with you, but I'm probably going to end up reading more. The first book that I'm reading is actually my Patreon book club book pick. So if you would like to read this along with me and go to a live, show, discuss it with everybody in the community. I'll leave a link for Fox and Wood down below. I highly recommend checking out Fox and Wood. We're doing this really, really fun readathon where we essentially go throughout the secret society of Fox and Wood and try to collect pieces of a golden ticket so that we can go to an autumn ball. And you get so many different graphics and TBR cards to download and keep. And it's really, really fun. And I'm really, really excited. So if you're looking for a fun, spooky readathon and also a couple fun little book clubs, check it out. But anyways, this is the book that we will be reading for October. I am so excited. Everyone who has read this has said that it is a 10 out of 10 and one of their favorite books of all time. And it's called The Haunting of Aveline Jones. And this is by Philip Hicks. I think I'm saying that right. The cover alone is just giving me absolute life. I am so excited. The only thing I know about this is that Aveline Jones is very into ghosts. And then she finds like a magical spooky book one day. And as soon as she picks up the book, spooky stuff starts to happen. That's all I know. I don't wanna know anything else. I really wanna go in not knowing a lot. I have a feeling I'm going to love this book. It's relatively short. And yeah, I just, I really can't wait to read Aveline. 
Caroline Jones. Okay, so I don't know if you knew, but I am Lindsay Puckett's biggest fan. I have been watching her YouTube channel literally for years. Like I love her vlogs. I love her writer's life. If you are somebody who loves writing, I highly recommend checking out her channel. This is her second book. The first book was The Glass Witch, which I read last year. I gave five out of five stars to, and I thought it was beautiful and fantastic and wonderful in every single way. And this is her newest book. She actually sent this to me with such a lovely package, which was so sweet. And I'm just excited to read this. This is gonna be a huge priority for me this spooky season. It's called The Odds, again by Lindsay Puckett. And I'm just gonna read the back. This is the story of Begonia who was abandoned at a retirement home when she was a baby. You might think that's the worst thing that could happen to someone, but for Bug, the worst is yet to come. You see, Swamp Root Manor isn't just any old house. It's alive, it's haunted, and everyone in it is a bit odd. Everyone except Begonia. While she's waiting for her oddity to arrive, the manor is running out of money, thanks in no small part to all of Bug's hospital bills. Begonia can't let Swamp Root close. If she could just tap into her oddity, she could use its power to save the manor and all 52 of her grandparents, but she is only days away from her 11th birthday, and if she doesn't get her oddity by then, it will never come. So Bug has to do the unthinkable, join forces with the most annoying boy in the world and track down their oddities together. I cannot wait to read this. I think it's gonna be so cute. I love a good haunted house story. I think this is gonna be absolutely amazing. And I just love Lindsay's sense of humor. I feel like she writes characters and plots so well. I can't wait to read this. I can't wait. Now I do wanna do the disclaimer that every single year I put a lot of books on my cozy TBR and my spooky TBR and I don't necessarily have the intention of reading every single book. I'm more sharing with you like my mood TBR, things that I really think sound good that I'm hoping to reach for in the next couple of months before the year ends. But these books all here, these are books that I I hope I'm not jinxing myself, but I am gonna try really hard to vlog and read these particular ones, like no matter what. So let's hope that that happens. The very first one is Agatha Christie's Halloween Party, and I am so excited to read this. I'm actually reading this because Gavin has very, very kindly invited me and all of my Patreons to join him for an Agatha Christie solve along. We will be trying to solve this together as like one big party. I have to read, I think up to chapter 24, or so and I'm gonna be trying to solve this Agatha Christie case and then we're all gonna get together and try to solve it together and then we'll read the end of the book together and find out who the actual killer was I know that the vibes are gonna be perfect but because I'm gonna be trying to solve this I have been avoiding everything about it including reading the synopsis until I start vlogging it and trying to crack the case myself I will be trying to vlog this and crack the case I told Gavin I would be like the Watson to his Sherlock, which I know is is not even, it's not an Agatha Christie franchise, I'm sorry. But anyways, I will be trying to help solve this case and solving this case myself. We'll see if I'm successful, but I'm very excited. I love a good cozy murder mystery and I really love Agatha Christie. The next one, is the one that I'm the most scared to read. Okay, so I love horror books, I but I love like Grady Hendrix horror. I love campy, I love fun, I love silly, I love lighthearted, I love a lot of commentary on things. As far as like straight up terror horror goes, I don't know where I stand because I chicken out every single time. This is the year though I have decided I am committing to reading Stephen King. I've gone back and forth. A lot of people have recommended Pet Cemetery. a lot of people have recommended Misery. There's there's a very specific reason I'm starting with this one. I know that it takes place in wintertime, but you'll understand when you see the vlog why I'm reading this one. This is gonna be my very first time reading Stephen King, and I'm starting with The Shining, and I'm so scared. All I know about this is that it takes place in a haunted hotel with a family. I think, well, I don't even know if the hotel is haunted, but I think that the hotel, like something is up with it. It's about a family, so a little boy and his parents are staying in this hotel, and they just have to basically live in the hotel and keep it running. It's not open to the public, it's closed down for winter, but they just have to stay in there so that somebody is watching over the hotel, and the dad is a writer, and scary stuff happens. I don't know anything about about it other than that. Like I've seen the memes, I've seen the here's Johnny stuff, you know, but I don't 
know what happens. I'm very nervous to go into it, but I am very excited to try reading Stephen King for the very first time. We'll see how it goes. Next up, I love gothic literature. I love it. In fact, I've talked to my friends quite a bit about how if I could go back to school, I would probably get a master's in literature, but like with a specific emphasis on studying gothic lit. However, I have not read several classics in the gothic literature genre. And this year, I really am gonna try to commit to vlogging my experience reading these classics. And I'm very excited about it. I have three for sure that I wanna get to, and then a fourth one that I would like to get to if I have some extra time. So I'm gonna be brief because these have been on my mood TBRs every single year for the past two years. I really wanna read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I really, really wanna read Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson, is that right? Oh my God, I got that. <laughs> Give her her masters right now, you know what I mean? But I wanna read this one, which is about like a mad scientist. And then the last classic that I think I wanna definitely read is Dracula. These are the three that I'm for sure committing to in that vlog. If I have time though, I really wanna read Anne Radcliffe's The Italian because this has been specifically recommended by Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin. He has a video all about like gothic lit. I really, really enjoyed it. And he loves this book or he loved it when he was studying it for school. And so I really, really wanna read this. I don't know anything about the Italian. I know it's a Gothic romance. I'm really excited to kind of go into this. It says, Anne Radcliffe defined the terror genre of writing and helped to establish the Gothic novel. I Okay, I really need to read this, I do. Okay, so those were all the books for sure that I'm going to be trying to vlog for the season. The rest of the books are the books that are on my mood TBR that I'm gonna be trying to reach for like whenever I can. The first section are all books that have to do with secret societies somehow. I think this first one, Malice House by Megan Shepard, primarily deals with monsters. It's about a woman who goes back to her father's old house, uh, which is like this manor on the cliffs, which I love the spooky atmosphere already. And he has passed away and he used to write actually. She finds a manuscript that was never published about monsters. And to kind of try to feel closer to her dad, she decides to illustrate the monsters. Spooky stuff happens. I don't know if like the monsters come to life. I don't know what happens, but something involves involving monsters and spooky stuff happens. And then as far as the society goes, the society in here, they're called the Ink Drinkers. And I believe that they're all like also writers and her father was a part of it. And the Ink Drinkers are really particularly interested in this manuscript for reasons she does not know. The next book that has a secret society in it that I really wanna read is this one. This is called The Luminaries and this is by Susan Denyard. It's about a girl named Winnie Wednesday and she wants to join this secret society called The Luminaries. It's an ancient order that protects Winnie's town and the rest of humanity from monsters and nightmares. But then her father apparently was exposed as a witch. She was chased out of town and now she has to prove that she's not like her father. I'm really hoping that she ends up like being on her dad's side because who wouldn't want to be a witch? And then this... <laughs> This next one actually has really not great reviews, but when I was looking at the Goodreads reviews, all of the bad reviews for this book made me wanna read it. Because the reviews were like, this is if Alice in Wonderland and the Chronicles of Narnia had a one night stand and had a baby. And I'm like, you know, that sounds like a good time to me. I don't know. A lot of people are saying that this is really weird, but I like really weird stuff. And so I kind of wanna try reading Jeff Vandermeer's A Peculiar Peril. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this book. I've had it on my shelves for a while. It's very, very lengthy, but it sounds incredible. It's about a guy who inherits his grandfather's estate. He goes to settle it and he finds that there are portals to other worlds in his grandfather's estate. I'm, I'm sold. I'm already sold. It sounds amazing to me. It sounds so good to me. It says that Jonathan discovers the house is filled with far more than just oddities. It holds clues linking to an alternate earth called Aurora, where the notorious English occultist has seized power on a magical field rampage. I don't know what to tell you. Like I'm into creepy old houses that are either haunted or are portals to other worlds. Okay. Like that just, yes. The next book that I really want to read is a dark academia new release from one of my favorite authors of all time, Kate Alice Marshall who I am obsessed with, you guys. This is called The Narrow, and this is a YA dark academia, and I believe it would be classified as a horror. Every time I read a Kate Alice Marshall around spooky season, it ends up being my favorite book or one of my favorite books of the year. Last year, I read These Fleeting Shadows, 
amazing. It like, I just had the best time reading it. Like while I was reading it, I was just happy. And I felt the exact same way for Rules for Vanishing. So I could not care less about what the synopsis is. I'm gonna read this and I'm gonna be happy. But I do know that it is about a like gothic haunted boarding school and like a bunch of secrets. And listen, Dark Academia, haunted boarding school, sign me up. I really wish that I had gone to a haunted boarding school, but you know. It's fine. The next book I really wanna read is one that I think would be perfect for like a cozy mystery, but borderline possibly more into like a thriller. And that is Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson. It just seems so cool. I've been wanting to read this for such a long time. Karen Slaughter actually, blurb the back, her books are a little too scary for me, <laughs> but I'm hoping that this is just the right amount of scare and intrigue and mystery. I have to read you the back because it sounds so good. It says, everyone in my family has killed someone. Some of us, the high achievers, have killed more than once. I'm not trying to be dramatic, but it's the truth. Some of us are good, others are bad, and some are just unfortunate. Have I killed someone? Yes, I have. Who was it? Let's get started. That sounds so perfect for October. That sounds so perfect for like a cozy night in by a fire with like a nice cup of tea or or something. I have such high hopes for this book. I've heard great things about it. I'm nervous to go into it, but I, I think I'm gonna love it. So I really can't wait to read it. The next book is a backlist title for me, but I've wanted to read it for a bit. I was actually watching Meg's channel. I love Meg. <laughs> I love Meg so much. I saw that she was doing a vlog where she read books that were inspired by The Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter by Theodore Goss. It just made me remember that I haven't read this and I picked this up because so many people loved it and I still haven't read it. So I would love to read this this year, especially especially since I'm reading so many classic Gothic books this year too. So I would love to read this book. It says, Mary Jekyll, alone and penniless following her parents' death, quickly finds herself drawn into the secrets of her father's mysterious past. A clue leads her to believe that Edward Hyde, her father's former friend and murderer, may be nearby. And there is still a reward for information resulting in his capture. But her hunt brings her not to Edward, but to Diana, his daughter. With the assistance of Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, Mary continues her search for the elusive hide and soon gathers around her more women, all of whom have been created through terrifying experimentation. I think it's gonna be good. Next up, I have two books here, but I don't wanna read these this October. I wanna read these for an extended spooky season in November, and that is Ninth House and Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. I have read this and I have tabbed it, and I really, really enjoyed it a lot. I think I gave it 4.5 out of five stars. However, when I went to pick up this book, which is the continuation of this book this year, I did not remember anything that happened because I read this two, three years ago maybe, and a lot happens in it. So I know the basic plot and I remember the ending, but I don't remember very specific details. And this has some pretty specific details in it. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually planning on rereading this in November so that I can pick this up. This is a Dark Academia book. It's following Alex. Alex is accepted into Yale University because she can see ghosts. She serves on sort of a secret society, but the secret society is really more like the campus police of secret societies. And they just make sure that the secret societies are not attracting too much paranormal activity so that it's like safe for everyone to practice magic because in this particular reimagining of Yale, all of the secret societies can have like magical abilities. It's great because it's half murder mystery, half spooky dark academia like vibes. I loved it. I thought it was great and I can't wait to pick this book up afterwards. I won't tell you what this is about though because I obviously don't want to spoil the book for you and it's a sequel. So yes, those are the books that I really want to read in November. And then finally, my last backlist title that I think I really, really want to get to is going to be The Death of Jane Lawrence. And this is by Caitlin Starling. I've heard really mixed things about this book, but I bought it last year and I really want to read it. It definitely gives me Crimson Peak vibes. It's about Jane and Jane marries this person. This guy is basically like, Jane, in our marriage, you're just never allowed to go to my childhood home and manor for your own protection and safety. And she's like, no problem. And then she ends up going. <laughs> And like, I don't know what happens. I don't know what happens when she goes into the manor, but I know that her husband does not look happy once she's there and scary stuff goes down. I'm just excited. I think it's gonna be fun. I think it's considered gothic horror and come on. Like it's, it is the season to be scared. And then let's round things out. I'll tell you what is currently on my Kindle. Look at my little case. I am so excited. I just redid my Kindle for spooky season and oh, look at this, look at this, look. 
Oh my gosh! <laughs> so excited. Anyways, let me tell you what is currently on my Kindle. Okay. Okay. So I just downloaded this one. I downloaded the September house and this is by Carissa Orlando. And the reason I downloaded this is because I literally just saw Kayla's last vlog about Instagram and she picked this one up and she started to love it. And then, well, I don't really want to spoil how she felt about it, but at the end she said that maybe it was like a little too campy for her. And then she said that people who are fans of Grady Hendrix and of T. Kingfisher and like a more campy version of horror would like this. That is my vibe. I think I'm gonna love the September house. All I know about it is that it is a haunted house. And I originally was not gonna pick this up because it sounds scary. Like one of the descriptions is that blood leaks from the walls. That's not really, that, Ew. However, I like and I am intrigued by the campy vibes of this. And apparently it's about a couple who moves in. Really, it's about this woman who like just vibes with the ghosts. I kind of like that. I also downloaded The Lake House. I'm interested in The Lake House specifically because E. Lockhart, who I love, blurbed this and said this was super, super good. It doesn't take place in autumn. It, I think, takes place at a summer camp. And it's about a girl named Claire who shows up at the summer camp and everyone is dead and now something is hunting her and her friends. And then the other one, there's quite a few on my Kindle that I really wanna read, but the other one that I know for sure I really wanna read is gonna be The Hollow Places by T. King Fisher. It says, a young woman discovers a strange portal in her uncle's house leading to madness and terror in this gripping new novel from the author of The Innovated, Unexpected, and Absolutely Chilling. And do you know who blurred that? Shauna McGuire. And I love the Every Heart of Doorway series with my whole entire heart. So so I already knew that I loved T. King Fisher, but when I saw that my other favorite author blurbed it, I was like, okay, add it to the list, you know? And I think that's it as far as like books that are on my Kindle that I definitely wanna prioritize this go around. Also, you guys, look at this. This is so cute. When I turn off my Kindle, my lock screen for my Kindle now is this little ghost. <laughs> I just, listen, I live for spooky season, okay? And I think you guys, that's it. That is my very, very lengthy mood TBR for all of the spooky reads I really, really wanna get to. If you wanna see more of like a cozy TBR, I did that last month and I am still picking out books from that whenever I'm interested in like a more cozy vibe. These, however, these are all just like the scary spooky stuff that I really wanna get to. Thank you so much for watching and also thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. All of the links for them will be down below. I highly recommend using their code spooky. $5, are you kidding me? I'd also like to thank all of my Patreons over in Fox and Wood. Thank you so much for supporting me, especially the Ink and Quill Club members. Thank you so much for being the executive producers for every single video that I create. And my question of the day to you is this, what is your number one spooky book you cannot wait to read this season? And if you're not interested in spooky, tell me the number one book that you really, really wanna read just in general for October. And if you've made it to this point of the video, please leave me any spooky emoji of your choice. It can be like a cobweb, it can be a spider, it can be a witch, it can be a vampire, any spooky emoji that you would like, please leave me down below. And I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I love all of you with my whole heart. And until next time, my lovely spooky friends, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye!